The impact of our winners is immense. Their efforts, often in the face of extreme difficulties, have sometimes led to new scientific discoveries, to changes in social attitudes, and even changes in national and international policies. What made you initiate the whole project, this whole movement? What I wanted to do was, was to send the money directly overseas so I could see when I was growing up that they were very successful and wonderful organisations who were involved in nature conservation in this country and, and, and across America. But what I thought that, where I thought the difficulty was was in funding overseas and it seemed to me that it was very hard for the money to be translated from, from here to Africa, to South America, to Asia. And so I wanted a direct funding system and I remember thinking, you know what, we can actually dispense with a whole raft of administration costs in this country and send the money directly overseas, but we've got to be able to find the people. I never thought anyone else would want to join forces with me. <laughs> so it's been a great surprise that more and more people have joined forces and, and we love it. I mean, the, the charity is very elastic. We're elastic both in the winners we're looking for, so we're not prescriptive as to what they must be, apart from there must be the success underneath. And then we're very elastic in terms of welcoming donors in. So as, as our donors have grown, so our number of winners we've been able to fund has has grown and the connections between them is is very dynamic. The ambition uh, of every uh, charitable organisation is to put the maximum amount of money at the front end, putting it in the field where the action is. But it is the ambition of every charity to keep mm. those overheads to a minimum. Well, the Whitley Fund uh, succeeds, uh, you know, cum laude with, <laughs> with, with enormous success by the simple means of going to the local people, not flying in people and putting it, not feeding them or hand feeding them or urging them so much from here, as to putting the money out there where it is and where it can be spent in the most economical and practical and, and, and uh, impact making way. Uh, th that's one of the reasons why I think the Whitley Fund is, is, is up there amongst the most admirable of charities. We are we're in a sort of headlong rush for extinction ourselves, where we're using up resources so unsustainably and cannibalising everything we're, you know, we're living off. And it seems that if we are such arch survivors, you know, why, why, aren't we ahead of, why aren't we ahead of the curve here and, you know, and, and finding ways to resolve be, it ourselves? Be, because the problems themselves are, are growing by the day. They're, at the root cause, of course, it's that we are more and more people in the world and the pressures on the natural world have become greater and greater and greater. Uh, the, the problems of conservation are never going to cease. I mean, they are unending. Um, and uh, I'm sure that some people sometimes say, oh, let's give up. Uh, but I certainly couldn't look my grandchildren in the eye and say, I knew it was happening, I didn't do anything about it. Uh, and, and there are things to do, and there are things that people do, and, and, and the Whitley winners are, are great examples of that. In India, we now have over nine Whitley Award winners working with, with plants, with reptiles, with elephants, including Sharu Mishra, who has emerged as the leading expert on snow leopard conservation. And he's managed to get the Indian government to have adopt his policy of snow leopard conservation. And he's expanded his range now to include working in Pakistan, Mongolia and China as well. So he's emerged as, a, as an erstwhile local leader who's now actually an international leader for this animal. That's an extraordinary achievement. Of course, it's a, it's a wonderfully charismatic animal, isn't it? I mean, the snow leopard, so rarely seen. I remember when I started uh, natural history filming, if you wanted to name an animal, uh, that you would never ever film. I mean, one would be the giant squid, which nobody ever seen alive, and the other would be the snow leopard. Uh, and I remember um, writing a, um, a program uh, and saying, we, we'll get shots here of the snow leopard, and people said, oh no, you won't. Uh, the only way you'll get it is in the zoo. But that is no longer the case. Um, and uh, the more we've learned, or more they've learned about the snow leopard, 
they know where it is now. They know how to protect it. They know what the dangers are and they know what the possibilities are. Uh, and that is a great success story. So with the mounting problems that you see around you and, and which we've become increasingly aware of since the 1950s, how easy is it to find solutions to them? Oh, solutions um, uh, coming from an outsider like me are very hard to come by. Um, you very quickly learn uh, that conservation is a complex business uh, and that um, the, the problems, you have to have local insight to know what goes on. You have to know that, uh, for example, there are great dangers in gorilla conservation between getting diseases from human beings to gorillas and that therefore one of the key things to do, as one of your winners has done, uh, is to introduce uh, sanitary arrangements in, for local people which will reduce the risk of a gorillas dying from human diseases, which is a very real risk. Now, to know that sort of thing, uh, you have to know what's going on on the ground. But local people, not only who know what the problem is, but who have the enterprise and the zest and the drive to work out the solution. We've really found that when I set up the charity, I knew the expertise was there. We knew that the passion was there. And, and you're right, it was the local knowledge and then I suppose we've been surprised by how far they managed to take it because some of the local winners have, have emerged as, as national leaders too. Yes, and, and they, they come from all walks of life. You wouldn't know where they were. I mean, they, they are dentists, they are um, local officials, they are chiefs, they are students, they are all kinds of different people coming out of the woodwork, as it were, driven by their own passion and insight, uh, who it would be very difficult for an organisation to coordinate those. Um, but the Whitley Fund again uh, seeks them out. There was a feeling 50 years ago that, that um, nature conservation was a kind of thing which um, uh, Western European scientists and philanthropists were very keen on, but there was a bit cranky, you know, a bit extreme. Um, and critics of conservation said subsequently to that, oh, you're going to try and then impose this on other people, on people in Africa, on people in India and so on. That's a very Western concept. It is not true. That was the marvellous thing, one of the things that's come out in recent years, that actually it isn't just Western European conservation bodies and so on. It is a worldwide thing. People worldwide recognise that the natural world is of crucial importance to humanity and that damage to the natural world is damage to humanity. Uh, and that has been very moving, really, to me. And so, David, on behalf of the charity, and indeed all the donors, and also all the winners that we've helped fund, we'd like to thank you very much for your long-term involvement. It's been an absolute privilege to have you as a trustee. Thank you very much indeed. Well, it's been a real privilege to meet these remarkable people. It really has. Ultimately, the Whitley Award depends upon its donors. It's your support as a friend that will enable us to go on finding and funding the world's most inspirational conservation leaders. Mm -hmm.